I have a bad problem of an experiment just turns turns into a large experiment. I don't really segregate. If I think it's a benefit, I use it across everything. Well, I'm Eric Lobemeyer from Tribune, Kansas, third generation. My grandpa moved out here in 45. This is family land. We do have uh, some rented acres. Our average rainfall is maybe 15 inches. You can throw the kitchen sink at it, and if you don't get moisture, you don't get nothing. That is my biggest constraint. This country is known to be brutal. I've actually kind of turned more to the uh, oh, a regenerative kind of heading towards that direction. Haven't got into the composts and stuff like that yet. Those are extremely time consuming and I don't have enough people to <laughs> keep that going. So I felt that Rise of Green was probably the easier way to kind of head down that path. Where I found out about Rise of Green was on the radio. There was a an ad on the radio that I just happened to be listening to at the time. And technically I just said, why not give it a shot? Can't hurt. Rise of Green is not what you'd call a bug in a jug. I'm also not for a bug in a jug because I think we have our own microbes out here and they're suited for this country. Why add something that they could kill each other off? We don't need that. Um, that was one of my biggest selling points was, is it was not a bug in a jug. All it was was technically a food, you know, to get your microbes that are already there fired up and working for you. What caught my attention on the Rise of Green deal was uh, the possibility of being able to reduce nitrogen input. And at that time, uh, nitrogen was, gosh, like 32% was like, 750 to damn near 800 dollars a ton it was it's crazy so i was looking for any way to reduce my input cost so normally on like a, a wheat fallow wheat i'll put 40 pounds down of nitrogen 20 to 30 pounds of phos down well i i cut my nitrogen down considerable with and use the rise of green most time i apply it with my fertilizer um uh, most time top dress wheat um, uh, when I do it on Milo Milo will be you know from here to here and I will be putting on either another shot of fertilizer or I run a, a chemical to burn uh, devil's claws out and kosher and stuff like that I haven't found anything that it won't mix with I think I've gotten a little bit more consistent I haven't had the uh, major dips like some of my other uh, fellow farmers around here I heard you know just this year on uh, wheat in the west part of the county 2025 was all they raised and I was raising 40 and 30 and 40 so and it's not just rise of green but rise of green helps better protein a little better test weight a lot of guys around here they could raise it and it would be 60 pound but they only have 8% protein in it and I was raising it with 60 61 pound test weights and getting up into the 12 and a half to 13 range and that was and all i was doing was using riso green so i feel that it helped a lot on on the protein side and that's it's got to be because it's helping the plant break out micronutrients to build the protein sulfur is a big component zinc is a component it, it's not just one thing that builds protein in wheat the root structure was two times three times bigger at least to me, more root mass out in the ground in this soil, uh, I have more organic matter being put down instead of it just laying on top. You know, it, it, it increases your organic matter by having a bigger root mass and therefore adds carbon. I thought it was maybe a little greener, you know, uh, the, the plant health looked better. Um, and then it, after it was headed, I think, you know, the wheat was probably two to three inches taller. One thing that we haven't touched on, like in Milo here, uh, iron corrosis is a big deal out here. Iron corrosis will turn your Milo just yellow. I mean, yellow, yellow. And when it does that, you're, you have tiny little heads, if it even heads at all. Sometimes it'll turn so yellow it turns white and dies. I've had guys, you know, you'll spray, put uh, iron on, you know, to correct it. And some of it's bad enough that iron won't even fix it. It helps on the yield on Milo. I know it does. Because in those areas where I was raising nothing, at least it's raising 
you know, say 30, 40 bushel versus zero. You know, I mean, if I didn't have it on there, it would be zero in those areas. The more uh, residue I got on top of the soil, the more moisture I collect. I think with the no-till and leaving more, you know, residue on the ground, it, I've got to be infiltrating a lot more, you know. I mean, it's got to be. I know when I was pulling soil samples, and this was before we got the last shot of rain, out in my no-till, the moisture was only down about an inch, inch and a half, maybe. And then by the time I got to six inches, you could ribbon it. And we hadn't had no rain for darn near a month. So, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Something's got to be working. I think it has helped my soil biology. Considerable.